It says and live. We're live. And we're doing it live, people. We are doing it live. I'm Dur- uh, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, and I'm hanging out with a couple of my normal nerds. But we have a special guest today, um, Lewis Porter Jr. And um, actually, it was Scott Garraby that turned us on to his work. And I really have enjoyed his YouTube videos and his industry talks. And right now, he's got a Kickstarter going for something that I find kind of groundbreaking in the industry right now. I don't know that anyone else has has done this yet, but he's actually collaborated with a bunch of third-party publishers, and they're all working together on this giant project, which I'm going to let him tell you guys about it after everybody introduces himself. Hey, I'm Nerdarchus Ryan, and drinking a beer. I'm Nerdarchus Ted. Not drinking a beer. (laughs) I'm Lewis Porter. I'm not drinking a beer, and I don't have a beard. I think that was something. I didn't get that memo. You're out of uniform, rookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Geez. I, well, I mean, this is my beard, so don't be impressed. Um, so, so yeah. That, that's our standing joke. The beard and glasses is the uniform. <laughs> well, I'm halfway. There. I'm halfway. I'm there. Uh, so yeah. So um, well, I always tell people, you know, the crazy idea of all right. Let me give you our formal introduction to what it is. Crisis of the World Eater is a mashup of Marvel Comics, uh, the Ultimate Galactic Story, and DC Comics, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Because those are two great comic book series, and we've all read them, and they're awesome. And I said, we should do it for Pathfinder. That would be great. And then I thought, I should get as many people involved with this, too. This should be easy. How difficult could this be? <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah, don't don't listen to the little voice inside your head. It's it's telling you all bad ideas. So you know, I got lucky. I got very lucky. We got nearly twenty guys, twenty other publishers together, to jump on and say, "Hey, yeah, we'd love to do that." And now we've got the Kickstarter going, and we are actually let me look at it again for the umpteenth time today. We are at four thousand eight hundred twelve dollars with thirty five days to go. Nice. Yeah. I think I looked at it earlier, uh, just a little while ago. And I think it's jumped up a bit. Yeah, yeah. People keep sneaking in stuff. It's weird because it becomes addictive. It's like the weirdest addiction you'll ever have. Just, oh, oh, did something happen. Oh, you've been doing that all day long. Yeah, dude. When you when you manage uh, social media profiles, it's kind of like the same thing, just like all the time, like pre Kickstarter, like just like oh, all these alerts happen. Yeah, and I'm and I'm one of those guys that's like, look, I you know, my real job is designing websites and doing layout. So I spend enough time on the internet already. Now I've just I've just locked myself into my new girlfriend for the next month. <laughs> you know, are you okay, baby? You all right? Okay. All right, good. It's good. Nice. Yeah. But I mean it's just, you know, I personally I just want to do cool stuff. That's always been my motto. Let's do some cool stuff. Let's push the game industry in different directions. I mean, this industry I love it to death. That being said, a lot of stuff still doing the same stuff we were doing 20 plus years ago. Yeah, I, you know, I find a lot of the stuff that you're doing kind of innovative. You know, the, and, and just the fact that you, you know, you basically, you know, your work shows your love for comic books and how you kind of infuse it in everything you do. You got a couple of campaign settings: yeah, Neo Exodus, the po- uh, Apocalypse. Oh, uh, the Apocalypse. Yeah, I'm a, look, I'm a comic book whore. I, I will whore out. Look, I, I have literally, well, these bookshelves used to have these books on them, and it's now it's 10 feet wide by well, about 5 feet high of books of comic-related stuff. There, there's also a rumor you've written your own RPG. Yeah, there's a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I will... Uh, I, I would say I'll never do it again, but I keep thinking... Never. Maybe I'll do a face rip update. I keep... That's always in the back of the head. That's always. Because... If you're gonna do a cool system, I love, I love face rip and I love their powers, and I I I, I'd love, I just lo- I'd love to do that kind of stuff. Superhero stuff is always exciting to me, so it's you know it's it's cool. It's it's the best fantasy I've read. Well, you know what though, like the the interesting thing about that is in this day and age, like you you can go that route, but you don't have to because I believe you know um, Green Ronin does a lot of OGL stuff. So does Fate. So there's, you know, in, in addition to Pathfinder and Alpha 5th Edition, so there's getting to be a lot of room where you can actually play in these other sandboxes without having to own any of the sand or the box. Well, you need a whole system, whole cloth, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think, well, for me, it's also, it's you know, it's, it's, it's very much, it's an engine. It's, the engine works. What are you going to put on the body and make it really cool? And that's the part that excites me. It's like, what can we do that you don't see usually in gaming and just, and, I, and for me, it's always the visual side. It's like, okay, first off, how does it look? 
Because I want people to pick up my thing and go, wow, that's cool. I've never seen that. Or even, yeah, visuals are big. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I always, I always go to my favorite visual of all time, uh, cover at X-Men 141. It's the Wolverine cover by John Byrne with the one poster in the back. and I mean, everybody's copied it. It's a great one because everybody sees it and goes, wow, that's awesome. And it is. It's an awesome picture. And I think that's the kind of thing that always helps start out to get something interesting. Because, I mean, you see so many people's... I've seen a lot of covers of books where I'm like, oh, you, could have, you could have done something cool. And then people just standing around and not doing anything. It's like, action. We need action. Action. You the standard job. cover... The standard cover is just, like, some dude or chick just standing there looking kind of cool, like, looking tough, but they're just standing there all the time. Yeah. That's such the standard trope, man. You dropped the John Byrne, and um, my, <laughs> my first the, for my, my first comic book that I collected seriously, uh, you know, some people might laugh. Come on, feel me, people in Canada. Alpha Flight was Good the choice. first one that, that really hooked me in, and it was because of role-playing games, to be honest with you. We were playing, you know, the Phase Rip Marvel game, uh-huh. And and I was trying to compete with Thor, the Hulk, Silver Surfer. I'm like, who am I going to play? And I'm flipping through a compendium, and I'm going to come across Box. And you, know, and, you know, he had just such a cool story, and he got even cooler once uh, Jeffries Madison took over the Box. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, it's my, funny. My, my first character is, you know, one, one of those standard standard tropes. I got, I got uh, Wolverine and the X-Men, so I'm fairly boring over here. <laughs> I was, I, was just, I was always amazed how well that game, you know, so many people loved that game and played it and still play it. It's always, you know, it's something that, is that if it's going on at a con, I'll sit down and play. I'll sit down, oh, boom, what do, you, what do you got? I'll take it, whoever. I don't care. Let's play. And um, on Facebook, there's a, there's a group, uh, One Shot Tabletop RPG group, and, and basically that's exactly what they do. They just play games in there, and you can go in there, um, and there's been a little resurgence of phase rip in there. People want face rip. They don't say they want it, but they want it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, we even did a campaign where we played phase rip, but we played uh, the superhero wrestling. Um, you know, from Marvel. That sounds awesome. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it was clobbering time, man. Jeez. Oh my god. So, because see, it's see, now the secret game that I've always wanted to do is a wrestling game. <laughs> there, there is one. Right. There, there is go. one. I know. I've seen. It. I'm not. I'm not very impressed. I was hoping for. I mean, I I love I love wrestling. I'm an old wrestling guy, you know. I'm, you know, WCW, not WWF. But that was always too fake. WCW had some legitimacy of actual wrestling going on. And then, you know, I just I would love to make one. I think it's, it could be popular if done right. Uh, I I know people that would play. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if UFC can be, have fighting and do very well, why can't we do wrestling? I mean, come on, it's it's awesome. I, yeah, you know, it would be fun. It, it's so cheesy. You'd have to go, like, over the top with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's sure it is. Yeah, macho man. They love that voice. It's like, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's well, and also, too, if you run that game, you absolutely have to have, like, the talking interviews, like, the behind-the-scenes well, I mean, that that's part of the game. That's what it's all about. I mean, yeah. you know, other than that, it's just, you know, it's just a combat. <laughs> it's just two sweaty yeah. guys r- rolling around <laughs> together. You gotta have the interviews. You gotta have the trash talking. Uh, you, you you've gotta have you know the 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 hidden props and the chairs and the things that you can throw into the ring or uh, you know you you've gotta have you know your sidekick so that he can distract the referee so you can do your dirty move. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, real quick, let me cut everybody off for a second just to let people know they're just joining. We got Lewis Porter Jr. with us here, and the reason we do is because he is running a Kickstarter for the Crisis of the World Eater Adventure. Uh, which spans uh, 20 different third-party publishers um, for Pathfinder, but you know they're also they also have some other levels in there. There's a 5e level uh, down there if we get some support. Yes. And, uh, in the description, if you're over on YouTube watching this, there is a ton of links to Lewis Porter Jr. all over the internet. I so am. Did, did, did we put the link up to the Kickstarter yet? All of them, man. I'm like bad porn. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Ridiculous. Now, so if I'm, I'm if I'm looking at the uh, the the Kickstarter properly, the five E stuff is just going to be PDF. That's not going to go to no no. Cover. We, okay, this is the problem. We keep saying it's only going to be PDF, but I keep going. We could do a print version of that. I mean, we could do a print. So the so the initially I was thinking of redoing the entire book as a PDF just for five E and redoing all the layout. But I said, well, just put the conversion notes and everything in the back of the book. So there, I'm at that phase right now. I. I'm, I'm assuming 
it's going to be PDF, but if it gets really crazy and we do really well, it actually might be a separate book. Okay. So that you know, the the PDF stuff makes uh, makes Ryan really happy. Yeah. He, yeah. He hates, I, he hates print. I I you know like you know how if you get into every iteration of a role playing game, you get like ninety books from that edition. Yeah. And it's a shitload of books to have to move. I just you know like I just want everything digitized because you just you gotta know, plant some roots, man. What? Yeah, no. I you know like I live in Philly and like what happens is like you move every year, year and a half because that's just how it goes. All right. So yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I don't mind. I like PDFs to look at people's work before before I actually decide to buy. Hmm. You know, I'm, I I enjoy having the book at the table. I I'm absolutely I'm a hoarder. I want the thing. You know, I've got my monster manual right here in front of me because I was working on something before the call. Um, yeah, I, I need to have the thing, you know, so it's like... You know, well, I'm, I mean, i got to admit, I'm kind of impressed with the whole um, Dungeon Master um, Guild thing. I, I, I like that idea that people can sell digitally, but I don't know if anybody yet has actually done a lot of books online for that. I think that's still... It's so weird to me that, that well, once again, that Watsi did that. I'm surprised they let people play in their playground as much as they have, once again. And, I mean, I did the toe in. It was interesting. But I don't know if I'm going to go 100% all on board, 5e all the time. Like, yeah. I, you know, we look at doing different things, and we would probably never put anything in the DM's guild with there being an OGL because, you know, we want we want more control. Right. And, and, you know, I mean, the only real benefit is going, okay, well, maybe someone from Watts will see your stuff, or, you know, everyone that's doing 5e is in this one spot. Right. But, you know, we'll, we sell stuff right from our own website, so or we well, started to. I said, I just think, I think they, I think the attitude was right because I don't think they could have gone back and tried to do another. We're gonna put a poison pill in this one, and da, da, da. I think some people were like, no way, that's not like a horrible idea. And I have to give them a lot of credit; they really were incredibly nice in a system they didn't have to be. So I think that's very impressive. And I think there's so many people are at least trying to do different stuff and trying to get their products out. I think that's very important. So this is a good thing. It's look, more people playing, more money made. More businesses opening, good for everybody. Yeah, I, I have to agree. You get more diversity. Although, I mean, the, again, it does go back to like the third edition glut, where you're going to get so much, so much crap you have to sift to to get those diamonds. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I mean, I mean I'd I'd rather sift through the crap and have more options than than not have the options. Yeah, I mean, plus the good stuff's going to float to the top anyway. I mean, the good stuff's going to get talked about. You know, it always has been, and always will be. It's just yeah, you know, just a matter of time. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't, I honestly did not think they were going to do it this time around. You know, I, I lots of discussion it. on it. Yeah. There, you know what's um, back to the DMs Guild. No one really uh, confuses me a little. I'm surprised even is some of the people that are putting stuff in there. I don't know if you've paid attention to any of the names, but I've seen I've seen professional level people and celebrities in the niche put things in the DMs Guild, and I'm like, why would you? But think about it. If you're if you're a big name person, it's kind of perfect. You don't have to actually because you don't have to have a real company. If it's really good, they're gonna take it anyway. They may attach you to it, and it's kind of like an easy way to get you involved by not getting you involved. I mean, let's let's go crazy. Let's say Vin Diesel writes up an awesome character class. I'm Groot. It's called the I'm Groot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they go, we gotta get this. We gotta use this. Hey Vin. Hey, we wanna use your thing. Well, sure. They promote the hell out of that. That would be the most awesome thing ever. And who, after seeing that, who wouldn't want to write something? Well, yeah, all I'm saying is, though, like, you can put it in the DMs Guild, yes, right? But you can go right next door to RPG Drive Thru and put it there just as easily. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, 50%. 50%. 50% is rough. That's a hard nut to crack. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, I, I well, I, I can say that I know people who put it on the put it through drive through and then put it through the guild. And then the guild does pretty well money wise, which I was kind of surprised. I'm like, even at fifty percent, they're like, yeah, I'm still doing pretty well. I was like, wow, because that kind of like was, I mean, that's a hit. That's a that's a date. <laughs> we're splitting it. This is an actual date now. We are now my girlfriend. <laughs> that's the level we're at. Now, that being said, I don't begrudge them for doing it because I understand they're not getting 50%. No. You know, and it's, it is cool that you can go and play in their sandbox and use Illuminster if you want to or Dritz. Oh, yeah. 
I think I'm just going to start writing for the guild where adventures where Dritz gets murdered. See, there you go. Me very happy. <laughs> See, I, I was just, I was, once again, I'm just so surprised they did that. But I think in the long run, it's definitely going to keep them fresh. They're going to find new I mean, people in their stuff. As, as far as I'm concerned, I, I think it's excellent because, you know, even if the, you know, even if the, the profit is small, you know, they're, go, they're going to be able to see, okay, what's selling a lot and be able to look at it. Because they're not going, they're not going to, you know, sort through everything. Their, their staff just isn't right. big enough. But if they're like, oh, well, these guys are selling 10 and this one's selling 150, well, then clearly this is the one we need to look at right. and see what's going on about it. And that's when they can, you know, look and see, well, all right, is there anything here that's really worth using? Is this person worth recruiting or bringing in for some kind of side projects? And the numbers are going to do the work for them. And I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of genius. Like I said, they're going to make money off of it. They're going to be able to use the numbers to get the information that they want, and all they need to do is just every once in a while go and evaluate. So anybody watching uh, from wherever you're watching, allegedly the Q&A is on, so you can ask us questions, and uh, we'll be able to field your questions. We probably have to be on the Google page for that, but if you guys have questions uh, for Lewis, if you want to know about the crisis of the world eater, uh, that would be a good place to go and start dropping those questions for us. So, what are some of the challenges you had to overcome to getting this thing going? <laughs> well, the first one is I had to, when I had to pitch my uh, main writer, uh, <laughs> Michael McCarthy, and I and he was finishing up an already uh, adventure path we were doing the one right before, and really he's like out of the eight adventures he's in adventure number seven, and I go to him I go hey um, would you be interested in writing some more for me? He's like yeah yeah that sounds like a great idea. I'm like yeah let me tell you what I'm planning. And, you know, the way I described it, this is, I'm being much nicer than I was when I was being to him, but it's kind of so crazy. I'm like, look, I'm going to take three adventures, have a beginning, a middle, and an end. But those two sections in between, the beginning and middle and the middle and end, I'm going to drop in side track adventures there. And he's like, oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. But I told him, well, they've got to make sure that they're not linear, and they can be used or not used, but still have to connect back to the story itself directly. And he looked at me, and I, well, sorry, I assume he looked at me because I was, I assume he looked at me and was like, what? Wait, what? And then I explained it again to him. Because it's a crazy idea. It's a crazy, crazy idea. And, you know, to, to Michael's, you know, definite professionalism, he says, okay, let me sit down. Let me think about it. And I told him, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. And I compared it to some other stuff. He's like, okay, let me sit down. Let's see what I can do. And he sat down, wrote down basically what I wanted. I told him how I wanted to break it up. And he wrote it up. And it, 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 it was perfect, but it was perfect. And he got inside my head, got everything perfect, and it came out on the paper. And it's awesome. And I can't wait to, for people to see it because it's like – that's why we did the whole prequel, because I kept saying, we got to get people interested. What's the best way to do that? What's something we can do to get them really interested and get them right off the bat? Let's do a prequel. Let's do a prequel. They'll love it, or they'll hate it. And if they hate it, we'll know before we put the money in. So let's test it out. So we did the prequel, and everyone bought it, and everyone loved it. So we were like, okay, we're on the right track. This is good. And, you know, we I, 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 I basically paid for the writing, like now. And, you know... He's written well. By the time it's all in, he's gonna he's gonna write seventy five thousand words just out of his part. And you know, I'm paying for the writing and the editing before we did the Kickstarter, so that money's gone. Well, that's good. I mean, like, I mean, it's good if you're backing this Kickstarter because you know you you, you know most of it's you know going to be done. Right. But you know, before it gets to the way it kind of should be. Right. Well, my big fear was I was like I'm like I'm never worried about the writing, and that's weird to say that, but I'm always worried about the art. So, we also have, a, we, we have our first question. Is Crisis of the World Eater going to play into a meta plot for past, past PFS, I guess that's Pathfinder Society, uh, Sky, example, uh, Sky Key Solution? I would no. say probably not, because no. you're a party. No, I'd, I would love to, I'd <laughs> love to do that. Um, we've had talks about making products that kind of fit, uh, I'd say, sideways or tangent tangently to the 
to the stuff out. For example, uh, Legendary Games has little adventure plugins they do that work really well with the um, uh, adventure paths. And we thought about doing that thing for PFS. The problem is, I think the player for PFS really wants to, I'd say like this is true, kill monster, get treasure. And they want to use it in other PFS. So we kind of were the outside guys, being the outside, giving you some outside stuff, and there was no really way to make that connection. That's, I, would, I mean, good Lord. I would love to get a piece of the PFS. I think I would rock it. I have a couple ideas that would work really well. But, you know, once again, it, I understand what PFS is to, to Pi's own with, with any kind of open open gaming is. It's their marketing arm to the direct hardcore fans. And that's, I mean, that's important. You want those people satisfied, you want them happy. So, I understand, I understand, I understand. So, um, also, like, I heard you talk about with the different products you've done, um, uh, I, I think uh, you've been in connection with one of, the, one of the people that are kind of local to us, does some work for Paizo and, and other people as well, uh, Alex Agunas? Yes, yes, yes. We've had, we've actually uh, he's actually been to Ted's house in Ted's basement and you know we've shot some videos with him. Alex is a guy that I keep trying to do more work with. It's just a, usually a timing issue on my end because and I'm gonna call him out for this. He doesn't. He he's always making all these cool little character classes and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, 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 you're real impressive. Okay, everyone's getting excited. Okay, here's a character class you can make for me and make me excited. Do the absorbing man. Okay? Do the absorb. Find a way to make the absorbent valid from level 1 to level 20. That's what I want. You do me that, oh yeah, I'll write you a check, boom. <laughs> we'll be selling that thing like hotcakes. Because it's, 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 to me, it's like, that's one of my favorite characters. That's what a villain should be. He's villainous, he's really simple, he's one-dimensional, he's got one gimmick. But it's an awesome gimmick. And in, I, I think if done in, I, I think in role-playing, it'd be so well done. It could be like, you know, some kind of wizard with some kind of ability... Lots of touch attacks. This could be awesome. It could be awesome. Nice. <laughs> the gauntlet has been thrown yeah. down. At least you gave him something nice and easy to work with. Well, you know, look, I don't want to be all thought. Too many guys are making, I mean, people are making, okay, here's something else people don't know about me. I can't stand a lot of classes. I mean, there's so many classes. I mean, there's so many classes. So many people want to, I'm doing a class. I'm doing a class. I'm doing a class. I Look, if it was up to me, there'd be like, 12 classes, that's it. And I get the reason why there are certain classes. Cavalier, I don't understand Cavalier, but you need Cavalier, I get it. I get it. But I don't like Cavalier. So if I'm going to do a class, my whole mindset was, it has to be something very unique that can't be emulated by something else and is genre-specifically different. So the first thing we did was our machine smith, which is supposed to be the artificer and that whole thing, an engineer, because let's be honest. If you've got guys who are casting magics, why can't you have guys who have large suits of armor that do cool things like Iron Man? I don't understand why that's not possible. And then we did a new, well, we're developing a new class called the Storyteller. And the closest thing I can come to the analogy is, you know, she has a scroll where she writes stuff, or whatever she writes comes true. So we're working on the mechanic for that. We kind of come up with a kind of okay idea. I think it might actually work. But I always said, I think Green Lantern. Green Lantern's a cool character because, hey, I got a ring. I can do whatever I want. That's kind of cool. And that is kind of, I wouldn't say game-breaking, but definitely game-changing. It's, uh, it's funny. I see, I see why our friend uh, Scott really takes you. Because you guys have to... I'm getting a lot of that. Yeah, there's a lot of feedback going on. I don't know if we if you mute your mics when you're not talking might help that a little bit. I don't know if that would be the issue. Yeah, I don't know. It just okay, well that's better now. Um but uh yeah, he just tried to basically introduce the destroyer armor into Ted's uh five E game. As he should. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So so like so you just made me think of that. We have another question for you. Uh, this one is from Parker, eight seven five two. The Kickstarter mentions that the adventure takes place over multiple third party settings. Can you, without spoiling anything, naturally say which ones? Um. Well, the, it's everybody who's listed in our in our list of third party guys. Um, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. This is this is at the higher levels. We we've, we've already. I don't care. I don't care about spoiler. Whatever. All right. Look. 
So when I was doing this, I said <laughs> to Michael and all my guys, Jeff, uh, <laughs> Jeff and <laughs> Joshua, I said, look, if we're going to do something where we're going to be killing plants, we're going to need some actual plants we've got to kill. So we got to need some stuff we got to kill. And they're like, well, we can make a whole world. I'm like, let's, no, 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 let's not do that. Let's not do that. And I told them, let's blow up. And I gave them a list of worlds. And I know some of you are going to be upset and scream again. Or, sorry, campaign worlds. And the first I said, Forgotten Realms. Let's blow that thing up. I can't stand it. Let's blow it up. Uh, Ravenloft? Yeah, we can blow that up. That's awesome. Ravenloft's cool, but we can blow that up. That'd be awesome. Dark Sun? Oh, yeah, Dark Sun. I'm going to miss Dark Sun and Ravenloft, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> we, can blow that up. we can blow that up. And Eberron? Yeah, we can blow that up. So, <laughs> and they all said to me, look, we don't own the rights to it. I'm like, I know we don't own the rights to it, but we're gamers. We can make worlds that have similar characteristics to that. Now, we're not making those worlds. They just happen to be similar. You know, similar. Not the same. Similar. So, <laughs> we, <laughs> we did that. And we have, hold on, let me, actually, let me see if I can get the actual page so you guys can understand how foolish and stupid I am. Uh, so I said, like, yeah, we got to name it something cool. We have to give it a really cool name to call it. Um, so all of them are labeled. <laughs> this is childish. It's completely childish, I know, but I'm laughing because it's funny to me. Um, we named all of the adventures um, the last days of Block. So, you know, we're planning to blow up the world. Or at least I'm going to try to. Because I, and, and these are like, the, these are other side tricks that are later on in the adventure. Because I think if characters are not dying or suffering or going through some really pain, they can't be good heroes. I think the best heroes are the guys who get up saying, I got out, but it took my arm. And you're like, hey, it's an arm. You can tell stories for a long time you lost an arm. That can be great. I want people to... Also, reappearing villains. I love reappearing villains. You thought you killed him. This time he's come back. He's, he's even more tough than he was before. That's the best stuff. I, I love that. I totally love that. So that's kind of what we're doing with this. There will be some moments where that will be happening where you'll get some very, very watsy inspired worlds that just happen to blow up. And sometimes you'll be on them. I just think, I it's, think funny. it's funny. If for some reason, it's me that keeps echoing. Um, I think it's funny. Talk rally? In the tunnel. So I, so I, I must be picking up uh, myself from you, Lewis, I think. Sorry. I'm loud and crazy. That's what happens. So we do have another question. And I also think it's funny that like all the worlds you're blowing up are, are Watsy worlds. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, I didn't, I didn't notice that. There, but there's uh, just something maybe Freudian about it. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. So for Forgotten Realms, we, we have our own little uh, nickname for it. And we like to refer to it as the Forgettable Realms. Even though we 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 enjoy the the novels and books, but not playing in that world so much. I mean, just to me, it's like it's to a point where it's like it's 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 fantasy. It's so fan. It's such fantasy tropes all done up every way, and I'm like, oh, can't stand that. Can't stand that. Uber gen generic. So we got here from uh, Web Mikey. He actually asked our first question too, I believe. Do you draw inspiration from mutants and masterminds? Teams, superheroes are coming up a lot. Yeah, you can't. Oh, hello, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look. Clark was right. Arthur C. Clark was right. An advanced enough technology will look like magic, and that's all I'm doing. I'm finding superhero stuff that can figure out ways to basically reverse engineer it to make it magical. That's what I'm always doing. I think it's just because I, for myself, somebody said this a long time ago, and I kind of believe it's true. Comic books are, to us, what the Greek tragedies were to the ancients. They're classic stories of good and evil. They're archetypal characters. They battle it out, and you make that on that connection. So I kind of just I play on that. I very much play on that. I think there's there's just some really good villains. Marvel has some great villains that would make great D and D villains. And I've said, okay, let's convert them. Let's try them. Uh, we have a book called uh, The Folding Circle, and every villain in that book, yeah, every villain in that book is uh, one of the uh, Legion of Superheroes. They're they're Super team, oh, sorry, the evil team called the Fatal Five. The five main guys, they're my versions of them. And they have two more characters that are Wildfire and Dawnstar from Legion of Superheroes. 
we converted them, made them cooler, how we do them, and then we just put it together. And that's what they did. Because I, you just need a good idea. Like here's, here's a secret. I, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever told anyone this. It's kind of obvious if you're paying attention, but it's not. We have a race of monsters in Neo Exodus. They're called the Caliban. If you look at their stat block, it's exactly the same as orcs, except for one thing. But we put them on these big albino bodies and made them cannibals, and then and people have gone like, "Oh my God, they're terrifying! They're orcs." Well, also too, the name Caliban. I think that comes from literature, right? Right, and it's like I like to I like to steal from a lot of different places. Is that is that Shakespeare that had Caliban? Yeah. Was that? Well, actually, the time, the time Machine I know definitely had that. And that's why that's why I stole that one from. And I was like, cool. People, when people are when people get put into the food chain like zombies or something, that disturbs people on a, on a basic level. People don't like to think that they're food. So I think that helped them. And people have been like, oh, they're such a terrifying race. And I'm like, they're orcs. They're just orcs. I've just put another covering on them. No, you know, like, here, here's the thing, though. If you give story behind them, if, if you don't just say, like, there's six orcs, but you say that, like, you know, they're eating people that are there and, like, all these sort of storying of it, it becomes much more of a threat than there's six generic orcs with great axes. Like, well, that, th that's the difference. Well, I think people also... And they've run into orcs so often that they're not interesting. Like um, John Wick did a whole book where he rethought up every all these major races. I love that book because it's like it takes something you already know and he turns it on his head and stuff you automatically assume. Well, I mean, uh, Gith Yankee is a prime example. Uh, we built another race, the Batan, for a new exodus. Are the Gith Yankee? We swapped out their silver sword for an electrical blast. And the idea for them, this is this tells you where all my ideas come from. I'm sitting down watching the first Kung Fu Panda, and there's a scene where the main villain breaks out of prison, and there's this big cat guy, and he's running up this chain, and both his, both his hands are covered in flame. And I'm like, that would be a cool race. <laughs> and then, like, 30 minutes later, I'm writing up the race, and I'm like, but I need a good history to it. I'm like, oh, Jeff Yankee, that's always good, because people always identify with people who are slaves, who have rebelled, and now after the slave masters. I'm like, perfect, and we tied it in. And it's like, ta-da. You saved yourself a lot of work. Well, it's like, there's tons of guys smarter than me. There are tons of guys smarter than me who are much more capable. They're better writers. They're better than me. I am not that good of a writer. Don't let it fool you, people. My skills are making things look pretty. I'm a, I'm a great layout guy. I can come up with great ideas and match them together with other crazy things. But, like, a writer? I mean, if I had to depend on my writing to eat, I would be dead. I would starve to death in about three minutes. <laughs> Oh, so speaking of writers, I, uh, I I remember hearing you make mention that you work with um with Clinton Boomer. <laughs> How I know Clinton Boom, we know who Clinton Boomer from was the Dungeons and Dragons PSAs, Dave. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, like, I know who Clinton Boomer is. Yeah, yeah, like that's I mean that's where he kind of came from, really. Like that is that whole thing, and then transitioning into writing for RPGs, actually. Boomer is one of those guys that I, I was talking. I love I'd, I'd love to punch him in the face. He's awesome. He gives away way too much free content. It's all awesome. There's nothing that's like, oh, he half-assed this one. Nothing. And it really upsets me to my core. I'm just like, really, dude? Does everything you have to do would be awesome? Can you just have some normal stuff for us regular folks? And, I mean, he did, he did some work for me. And I was like, I was just amazed how good it was. It's just like, oh, I want to choke you with both hands. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel you, man. Uh, pay what you want hurts my soul. You know? You know, it's just... It just Certain guys, certain guys are just amazing guys to deal with. I mean, Clinton's definitely one of those guys. Um, my man, my, my Can we man. talk about that in RPGs, the race to the bottom. Like that's like any business you're you're in. It, the only thing that you can do worse than pay what you want or free is paying people to take your stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, like that's the only next thing you can do is pay people to like take your content. I guess. And, and it's so weird because it's like this content is all perfect. And, I mean, look, there's tons of guys putting out stuff that's crap. There are always be guys who do that. No big deal. But once in a while, they get a good gold nugget. Like, hey, that was kind of good. But, like, his stuff, he, he did, he did, this tells you how stupid I am. He did an entire world that was, he did Marvel for Pathfinder. The entire Marvel universe for Pathfinder. And I keep telling him, dude, just put it out, erase the names, change it up a little bit, and put it out. Because people would buy it by, like, hotcakes. It's amazing. And he gave away for free. He gave away completely for free, and it's probably, I kid you not, like 20,000 words. 
That's head scratching. I mean, because especially too, like if you look at Mutants of Mastermind or any other generic superhero game, like they've taken all the major tropes of superheroes, right. and like it's not like he's doing anything disingenuous because everybody Marvel and DC ripped each other off back and forth. I mean, that's how it went. I love reading the Mutants of Mastermind books and going, you know, uh, you like picking through the heroes and going, that's Silver Surfer or right. that's that's so and so, and like that's part of the fun for me. Uh, with that, we got some more questions too. Uh, Steve Waterman would like to know any tips for keeping things balanced. Balance is a lie. Balance is a full faith lie. Don't believe it. There will never be balance, and never will be. Let me prove it real easy. Half orcs, elves, starting races. Are they balanced? Of course not. Orcs suck. We all know that. Elves are awesome. <laughs> There's no balance. Stop with the balance argument. It's all. It's all in your head. If it feels balanced, then it's balanced. Though it never will be. You know, I've seen guys do stuff. Where you go, that's not balanced, but it is. You see stuff that goes, well, that was that was very balanced, and it isn't. It's all up here. If it feels balanced, it is. If it isn't, just look. We you know it. what? Speaking speaking to balance, like it's funny when you look at like I don't know how much how extensively you've looked at five E because that's kind of mainly what we've been doing these days. But like some of those classes, the way it works is. Uh, some of the balance happens, they might be weaker on the front end, and then oh. they get abilities on the back end, they're like, alright, you waited to get this really awesome thing, and then some of them are a little more front-loaded, where, like, they get some really sweet abilities beginning, and then it kind of tapers off. Like, it kind of mixes and matches with balance. Well, it's like, I, I, I always go back to the fighter, the fighter magic user issue. If the wizard's here, and the fighter's here, and they're fighting at first level, who gets killed first? Wizard. Wizard. Always Mr. Wizard, yeah. And that gets to about, you know, six level, level six where it starts changing that a little bit. Then it gets to a point where at, where at like 15 or 14 and up, they just become too powerful, period. And the fighter doesn't have the same balance. They're like, well, he's front-loaded. Well, he's not really front-loaded because it's like I get these cool things I get to do all the time and they're little, they're little, <laughs> well, he gets the short, big bomb, but when you're taking out 10 guys at a time, well, it doesn't really matter. So it's like they really need to lower both, lower and raise both of them to make them really equal. And well, but, you know, like Five E totally nerfs the spellcasters because they've changed the changed the way that concentration works. That like basically you can only have your big buff spells up as a spellcaster like one at a time unless you have like a special item. So like really, they like you can only have stone skin on and that's it. Like you're not mirror imaging and stacking five defensive spells. That's a counterbalance. So, so I, I kind of agree to an extent about you know the the illusion of balance, and I think since third edition, the the racial modifiers, I think there's a reason why they're they're unbalanced, and I think they're trying to to stack the more common races um, with more stuff so that more people play them. And I, I, I found that exact exact example when, it, when we switched over to, to third edition, you know, way back when, that it's like, well, why would I not choose human? I get the fee. Like, right. the, like I was an elf nine times out of ten. You know, you can ask these guys. I, I played elves because elves were awesome. And third edition is like, put, put a fee. I got I to gotta pass up a feat to take an elf? Oh, so most of my characters were human, and, you know, it, it took a role-playing choice to say, well, let me play something different. Yeah. Um, it's, it, the, the whole balance, I mean, because I, I did a whole book about um, creating your own races. We broke them down to point cost. And the book was pretty, it's one of my favorite books. It's, it's a real well-done book. It's well put together. But if you look at the point cost, it just it, they're not balanced. Dwarves and elves are just immensely better than everything else. Well, one last thing on uh, on balance, and then we'll go to another question. So, all right, first of all, we all know dwarves are the master race, and we can just oh. leave it at that, and there's no need for balance. Hi, Dwarfler. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so uh, we got Web Mike 8 again with, uh, ever looked at the D&D Book of Vile Darkness? What great... Material for uh, what? It, that's a great material for making villains. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I like it. I like the torture stuff actually more. I think um, torture is something that they don't get right in gaming. Um, you have extensive we, experience with this. <laughs> well, it's just like you know, we, we have a guy who did a book for us about torture, and the section of torture is really amazing because it's the common sense of okay, I've broken you down from torture. 
Now I need some more information out of you. And most people, most people play it out like, oh, I've broken you, I get all the information. This guy was like, I broke you once, and instead of being at 100, now you're at 80. And the next time you're going to be at 60, and then 40. And it broke it down like that. There's different kind of ways to do it. And the system was pretty simple, but also very elegant. I think that's important in gaming. But I mean, let's, let's be honest. How many times have you pulled out a weapon to try to intimidate someone to get information? Everybody has. But when you start hacking off fingers, they should have some responses that correspond logically with what they would do. So that that part of the book I thought was interesting. Um, I think I don't like evil for evil's sake. It's got to be useful. If it's not useful, it's not useful to me. You know, I, I would have added more drugs to it. I think drugs are very useful. Plants, um, traps. I'm big on traps. I like a good trap, a good tr simple trap. You know, one of my favorite ones is uh, oh God from uh, Fantasy Flight. You walk down a walk down the hallway. You get sprayed with blood. They release these wolves after you, and they're hungry. It's a simple trap. It's very simple and quite dangerous. Another one I love doing, I, I've done this one so many times, it's ridiculous. You get somebody in a grain silo, and they're walking through a small tunnel. Make sure there's torches uh, lining the thing. They walk to halfway through the thing. A gust of wind spell goes off. It lifts up the flower. Well, for all you who did not do any fun stuff physically, I did. The flower ignites when it touches the flame. And it's like a huge fireball down the hallway. Nice. It's Fun simple time. and easy. And it's That's like... Walter White shit right there. And nobody thinks about it. Nobody thinks... You know, I see flower on the ground, I'm like, what? no, stop. Flower on the ground? Wait, what? And everyone's like, what? What? What's the crowd? I catch guys with that constantly all the time. It's one of my favorite traps. It's like, come on. You didn't see that one coming? Come on! Flower's dangerous. Well, I mean, that, but that's the thing, though. Like, it, it kind of... It's a little metagamey in that, like... If the character didn't have access to that or experience with it, like maybe somebody who was a farmer or right. a maker might know how dangerous the flower is. But so the one one or two characters are were like tradesmen, like a baker. Like yeah. they actually this is the one time their skill set comes into use. And then like the, the outdoorsman and the hunter is like, I don't know. <laughs> That's right. It's like you think I, I like common dangers, you know, little things that are just oh my god. You can drown you can drown in a foot of foot of water if, if something happens. I like things like that. It's like, oh my god. But it's stupid, but it happens all the time. Hmm. But that's just me. I'm crazy like that. Hey, most accidents happen within three miles of the home. You know, like, it's a common danger. Yeah, there were some good things in that book, but a lot of stuff was just a little bit, like you said, evil for evil's sake, which never really, eh, it's kind of like immature. Yeah, but, you know, I get it. I get why people like it. It's that, you know, to each his own, but if you're going to be evil, just be evil. Just be evil. Evil's awesome. <laughs> We'll quote you on that one. Evil's awesome. <laughs> Lewis Porter Jr. I, I don't believe that. That sounds like me. That sounds like me. <sighs> nice. So, how long did it take you to throw this Kickstarter together? Like, not not the actual Kickstarter itself, but get everyone on board and uh, you know agree agree to work together. Was that was that um, more difficult or easier than I thought we thought it was going to be? I kind of imagine like herding cats here. It's actually. I set it up to be very, very easy. I really, I set it up to have it work for my advantage. When I pitched the idea, okay, it works like this. If you're a third-party publisher and you want to work with us on this, very simple. All you need to do is you tell us, hey, I want to work with you. I go, okay. You do your side track. Your side track is going to be 5,000 words, and it's a MacGuffin-style adventure. And you can get whoever you want to write it, whatever. We'll, we'll handle the payment of it. We'll, we'll, pay, we'll pay your writer. You tell them what you want to write. You want to tell them about your world, make it an intro adventure, which, which should be. But it's MacGuffin. That's all it is. And you design it, 5,000 words. You send it to us. We'll do the, We'll get the art for it. We'll do the layout. They don't have to do anything. We handle all that stuff. Wow. You, got, you took on a lot. Well, really not. People think it's like, wow, you did a lot. Well, the writing's the tough part. If I, had to get, if I had to hire guys to write for somebody else's world, da, 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 that's too much problems. Let them pick the writer. Let them deal with that issue. We can deal with the editing and layout. And art is easy. Art is the easiest part. Hey, see the scene? I want this guy and this picture and this like this. Here you go. Go. It's Art's easy. I think art is easier than writing because it's visual and you can point out stuff. I mean, if anybody doesn't know, I'm, I'm a huge Pinterest whore. I'm a total Pinterest whore without a doubt. It's ridiculous. And I'm like, you know... 2,000, 3,000 pictures of stuff that I have that I can use for people to go, oh, here's a piece of art. Use this piece of art for this thing here. This is what I want to look like this. Just 
to make this guy out, put this guy in. Done. And that stuff's just, it's very easy and painless, and it saves you a lot of time. The adventure part's the hard part. You know, that, and the maps, you can get guys to do maps. You know, hey, I got this map, it looks like this, draw it up. Okay, great, thanks. That's the easy part to me. It's the writing and editing and going back and forth. Did you mean this or did you mean that? Or, oh, I thought you meant... Oh, my God, my God. That, could, oof, that would kill me. That would kill me. So yeah. we got a little bit of an interesting one, and it's only really interesting because he's asking this group. So Christian Oliver, is there a low magic fantasy system other than modifying D and D that would that you would recommend? And you know, obviously, you're a big Pathfinder guy. We're big D and D guys. <laughs> if you want a low magic system that you could use, top secret. The RPG, yes, that's low magic. There's no magic. I don't believe in low magic. I'm like, what's the point, man? What's uh, uh, cap somebody spell it like second level? That's boom, done. That's low magic. Why would I want to play in that? You know, it's like I play in fantasy because I get to large dragon breathing fire. Ah, townspeople run for it. I like that. Yeah, at that point you're really playing a fictional, you know, or historical RPG, which. Again, like, it, you know, if that's what people like, it's what they like. But me personally, I wouldn't want to play in that game. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, like, you could take D20 Modern. I mean, they have spells that go to fifth level, and that would be low, that'd be low magic. They have a, D, D, perfect, D20 passed. Low magic, they have a certain amount of spells, it's already done, it's very painless, it's OGL, basically most of it. And you can go with that. I think, it's like when people say, oh, would you want to play a Stone Age RPG? I'm like, why? I don't. I don't... Oh, like Gamma World. Why? It's, you know, it's after the fall. I'm running around with cockroaches. It doesn't end. It's not exciting. Most of my days trying to scrounge for water. I don't, I don't want to play that. That is, that is exciting. Well, now, I would disagree on the Gamma World because I like the hodgepodge mix of everything. <laughs> uh, you know, and mutants and stuff like that. And yeah. You know, technology instead of magic items or, 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 you know, magic gets mixed in there. I have fun with that. Only if it's Bugs Under the Barbarian. Only that one. That's the style, yeah. That's yeah. the style. We got so these guys are starting to get warmed up with the questions here, and they're they're coming in fast and furious. So we've got uh, Steve Waterman again. Okay, you like? Okay, the trap the trap was amazing. So <laughs> goes for that. Do you worry about balance when creating a new class? I have one uh, I'm working on, and I just can't seem to get it to work out. So I mean, I, I mean, we touched on balance a little bit ago how we really feel about it. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. If you really want to find out something really balanced, put it out there for free. Let people let people kick the tires. Um, we did that with the machine. They ripped that thing to shreds. The first go around and the last go around, I mean, it was, it, I mean, they really, they pounced on it. They pounced on it. And people, it's interesting. People online are not always the friendliest people, but you need it. They're ruthless? Yeah, that's if they're being nice. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> And, it's, and, and there's some people who don't like you, may not like you personally, which is even better, because they're not going to pull any punches, and they're going to rip it up, and they're going to do things you never thought they'd do with it. And when you're done, and I would say, and after all your orifices stop bleeding, then you can make a decision what to do. But it's 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 actually better to put it out for free, because this is weird. I don't get, I don't understand this as a as a business person. You can go right now on RPG, uh, on drive. Oh, good lord. Uh, P. Uh, good lord. D20 PFSRD. The Machine Smith is there totally for free. Totally, completely for free. Everything. You can play it. You don't have to pay me a cent. It's up there. Do it. People still go and buy the PDF. Now, I always go the same thing. It must be because we did such a good job on it, they don't want to feel that, they ripped up, that they're ripping us off. And that's probably why they go buy it. But the stuff's there. It's free. It's, I, I, I told people, yeah, put it for free. It's great. People are going to love it. I think when people see the hard work and see the end piece, they're very much more happy to buy it from you, to make sure of it. And if it's good, they want to make sure you do something else in the future. I just think I think it works. I think it's crazy. It doesn't make any sense logically as a business guy, but it's it works. Yeah, I mean, you have a good point there. I've seen in one of the D&D groups where someone was like, well, I bought this thing, and there's so much, there was so much in there, and it was pay what you want, and I don't know if they got it for free or a dollar or 50 cents or whatever it was. And I think it was fifty cents because I because I kind of like riffed on him a little bit because I'm like, at that point, why'd you even bother? But um, you, um, but they're like you know a lot of people had a good response, which was you know if you if you liked it and you did a pay what you want, go back and buy it again. 
right. and pay what you think it's worth. Right. To, you know, to see the person get what they, you know, what they deserve. Yeah. I think, I think pay what you want is a very good style. I mean, you know, it, people, I think the price, price is a friction that causes trouble when people want to try something out. If it's free, I'll try it out. Oh, it was really good. Here's some money. I really appreciate that. What else do you have? And that's very much how people do. People, they find something good, they want to find more of it. And if it sucks, you know, they say, good thing I didn't pay for this. I'd be mad. With your Gamma World box in the background right there. I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over my shoulder. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, from Web Mike 8 again. We've seen good traps, such as the flower and blood they, and exploding guards. They like that. How about environmental hazards? Mike wants to pick your brain a bit. Gravity's always nice. Gravity, it's very simple. It's incredibly dangerous. Turn it off. A little spot. Boom, oh, wham. You know. Or, or reverse it. <laughs> oh, so I, don't, see, I think reversing is way too nice. I think, you know, I mean, you can do quicksand. Quicksand is also a very interesting one because it's 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 that it's something you don't think of a lot. Okay, oh, I'm sinking, I'm sinking. But there's tons of movement issues before you get down to where you have to worry about trying to swim through it. You know, when it's like knee high, you're still trying to lift your legs up. You're like, ugh. So your movement goes down from being, you know, that 30 to 5. And, you know, crossing something that's only like 40 feet becomes now incredibly dangerous. There's that kind of stuff. I think people... And then throw snakes in there. Yeah, you know, like or, that. you know, it's like, I live in South Florida, okay? One of the one of the scariest things to me in South Florida is gators. And everyone jokes like, oh, alligators, ha, ha, ha. Well, you know, it's very common in Florida to go, go to someone's house, see a pool, find a gator at the bottom of it. You know, it happens a lot more than people really think it does. And, like, my backyard is full of, like, iguanas. But we're not talking like, oh, no. We're talking, like, legitimately sized iguanas. And not, like, one or two, eight or nine. Herds of them. Packs. Right. And, it's, and it's funny because you'll open the door and they'll just take off. And you can't see them in the grass because they're the same color as the grass. Exactly the same color. And when they're laying low, I mean, we're talking, my grass is only this high. And it's still hard for me to see them. So it's stuff like that. Stuff like little things like that are awesome. You know, I had a buddy who did this one. I, this is years and years ago. He had, i got to get this right. It's such a long time ago. He had two rows of kobolds with knolls behind them with flint bars. And the way he was doing it, which is ingenious, the kobolds were in front fighting the PCs. The gnolls would use their flint bars to grab the people's weapons, disarm them, and then toss it behind them. Hmm. And after like three or four rounds, the guys had no weapons. And, and, it was like, <laughs> and it's like, oh crap, what do we do now? I like playing a monk. I didn't have those issues. <laughs> they had those issues. <laughs> so, but it's just like stuff like that. Little things that deprive the players from what they expect. Because players are, you know, ah, I've got this magic sword. Ain't I awesome? And the second oh. I lose that magic sword, please save me. Yo, you know, you, you run a campaign where people have access to, like, buying whatever for the game. Like, so it's all the level of the characters. Wouldn't it be that people always, like, sink all the resources into, like, the primary item weapon that they use or item? Whatever. Right. You take that thing away from them, and they're like, oh, God, no. Uh, no. Right. Yeah. And their backup weapon is never a good backup weapon. I never understood that. It's like, have, your main weapon should be awesome. Your backup weapon should be kind of awesome. At least 80% of what your main weapon is. Because you're going to need that. Because something's going to happen to your primary weapon. And if you're like me, broken, shatter, sunder, sticky, too hot to hold, uh, too cold to hold. Too cold to hold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, you know, there's tons of stuff you can do to stuff. There's tons of stuff you can do. But people, you know, people don't think metal is quite conductive to electricity. We'll put them between electromagnets, see how that works out. You know, everybody's tough. Ah, so they can't move. You know, there's tons of great little small little things. There's a pick any good high school science book. You'll find a lot of cool experiments. They work also good as traps. The uh, the quicksand thing. It made me think of. I saw a meme on Facebook the other day, and it shows like all these shots of people sinking in quicksand from like older TV shows, and it's something along the lines. I always thought quicksand would be more more prevalent in my adult life. <laughs> right. You know, I love it. Yeah. I think that's from the comedian John Mulaney. He did a bit about that. He was like, that's one of the things that I always worried about as a child was quicksand. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. It was, it was, that was the that is the ultimate plot, plot We did something good, easy, quicksand, excellent. <laughs> that goes all the way back to Tarzan. As everybody knows quicksand is deadly. Hmm. You know, you can swim through it if you have enough strength, but it's you know it sounds stupid. I'm gonna sink in the sand and die. Well, who would be that stupid? It happens all the time. Uh, so, so we've been on here for about an hour. We're closing in on. Is there anything you want to get off your chest? Anything you want people oh. to know? Let, let's, in case you guys join late, make sure you know we're talking about you know a bunch of stuff. But primarily, there's a Kickstarter going on right now. You can find out about it in in the description below on our on the on the YouTube page. Uh, Crisis of the World Eater, very much. Uh, Crisis of Infinite Earths and. Uh, you know, the Galactus storyline from Marvel all mashed together but put into fantasy worlds across different publishers, third-party publishers, which is ingenious, by the way. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a gripe. This is going to be one of those things I shouldn't talk about, but I'm going to talk about. Exclusive. Oh, yeah. What, what, I, what I hate the most, and this is it's not as bad as it used to be, but this is still pretty good, is when people come to me and say, we do a Kickstarter, they're like... Oh, I wouldn't support your Kickstarter, you know, but you're third party. And, you know, third party isn't as good as the main thing. My counter to that usually is always begins like this. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You do know that most of the guys that have third party companies are the same guys who are doing the work and the stuff that you like. They just do it freelance and they want to make some extra money. That's why they start their own company. Not to mention that um, friggin' Mike Merles and Chris Perkins started from Sword and Sorcery, a third-party publisher. Doesn't matter, because it's not official. See, I only play official rules. What you guys are doing is not official. Shut up. Shut up. Mike what? Merles only became good once he was hired by Watts, apparently. Oh. Well, I mean, but, that, but that's how some people feel. Some people have this whole attitude that, oh, it can't be good if it's third-party. you got to be anointed by somebody. Well, I, I would ask anyone if, if they said that they don't do third-party. It's like, well, do you only play... The, the pre pre printed adventures, or do you run your own stuff? If you're running your own stuff, you're your own third party. Yeah, it's 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 a little arrogant in the worst way possible. You know, it's like, dude, we're we're all about being creative. Now, I admit, a lot of the third party stuff in 3.0 was ridiculous. I mean, mongoose killed a lot of trees for no apparent reason. Oh, I like some of the mongoose stuff. Yeah, but there's some stuff you're like, ah, I think I hurt myself. I touched it. <laughs> you know, but it's like, it, it, it's people get this attitude like it's still bad. It's still 2002. Dude, it's 2016. Most of the third party stuff now, uh, it's funny to me. Like, you know, I've been doing this so long. I remember how it used to be. Everyone's very nice and friendly now. When I was doing it, it was literally the wild, wild west. And it didn't matter. Anything went, especially on PDFs. Anything went. I tell you, I got I got in battles and conflicts with guys I shouldn't have. That I should have been friends with. But back then, it was like, screw you. You're taking my money. I need that money. I got bills to pay. I need that money. You well, know? also too though, like I mean, back then you didn't have the sort of um, easy platforms that we do now. Like a drive-through RPG wasn't really existent, right? Like or well, here's, the here's the funny thing. Um, I got an RPG now. I'll never forget. It was one of those things of, oh my god, what's this? I can sell PDFs online. Two thousand. Mm. Oh wow. I didn't see drive through, I, and this is this is how weird it was. I didn't start making. I got my first fifty dollar check, fifty yeah, fifty buck check the first month, and I thought this was the greatest thing ever. Fifty bucks was awesome. Mm. Uh, in year two thousand two, Meet the Masterminds came out. No, no, no. I, I moved over to fantasy then, and then I was making. I gotta get this right. 2002, I was making like a hundred bucks a month, and I was like, "Ooh, this is good money." Then I started moving over to more uh, 3.30 uh, stuff. So by the time of 2002, it became 2003, I was making about uh, 400 bucks a month. And I was like, "400 bucks a month? This is awesome!" In 2004, at the end of it, I wound up making about 1,600 dollars a month. Mutant the Masterminds was huge, and I mean, that's to me, I would say that was the weirdest jump. I, I basically had a 16, you know, 400% growth and then 400% growth. Mm. And it was like, what? In two years. And that's when I knew, oh, this thing's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. And at that time, you're still talking, Monty Cook was still doing very small stuff. He was still, you know, testing the waters. And, you know, the stuff that Monty's doing now, I thought he was going to be doing seven years ago. You know, he took, like, all this time off and did these other stuff. And I'm like, why is he making his own stuff? He's already got a fan base. Why does he do it? And then he came out with Numenera, which makes sense, and now he's doing more stuff like that. 
but I always assumed that he would be doing that earlier. So, I mean, I think so many people wait for the major publishers. Like, you're not validated unless a major publisher is touching you. Like, you know, unless you have Watts come and touch you on the shoulder, right. you're not worthy until that, that's preordained time. So, like, maybe Monty Cook was just, like, gun-shy about, like, going up against his own em old employer in a way. Uh, I, uh, th to me, that never makes Well, once again, I'm also not in Seattle. I'm a, I've, I've always had a mindset of the guys in Seattle... They're they're all good friends. They all know each other. They're all in the same circles. They're all they get the same level of creativity that you can expect. And they, I'm sure they play the very much the same way. It's that very West Coast style. That's what I'm gonna call it. You know, I'm an East Coast boy. I'm very very different. I I like the East Coast. Group all up and down the East Coast. And I've seen crazy stuff done that it's good. It's just good. If it's good, it's good. It doesn't matter who makes it. It's good. Good stuff sells. Now the funny thing about that is, like, if you're, you know, if you're a fan of Watts and, and what they're doing now, they're farming out all their work. Right. They're not, they're not doing their own adventures. Everything is, you know, uh, being farmed out to Cobalt and oh, yeah. Green Ronin. I was so happy when I seen the, seen them tap Green Ronin. It's like one of my favorite third party publishers. Well, I, I heard rumors that they, they they approached about a dozen guys to do stuff for them, and. One of them I knew, guys I knew very well. I was surprised they didn't take them up on their offer. They were like, "No, we have some other plans for our stuff." And I looked at them. I'm like, "You were the dumbest mofos I've ever met. You should have just taken that money and danced around naked." You know, well, I mean, but, but it might have been like the contract wasn't advantageous enough. Like when you own the thing, like there's a difference of like the quick payoff versus the thing you own for the next five, ten years, right? Like so, that might have been the question. Yeah, but once again, let's let's just call it like it is. If all you have is one great idea and you're gonna do it to give it to Watsy and that was your only good one, you weren't that good to begin with. Well no, so, I'm I'm saying like if you're developing an IP that you completely own versus doing something in Forgotten Realms or whatever, like at the end of the day, like whatever you do, Watsy's probably gonna own it under that auspices for like Ronin Green Ronin or, or Cobalt Press. But you know, if you're doing your own things that you're like thinking in a, on a longevity sort of model Five ten years down the road, like all right, you might have got this this buttload of money up front, maybe like or you know who knows how good it was, but then versus the payout of the thing you could have done. Well, I was forget, forget forget about the payout. You gotta you have to think about the the publicity and the coverage. You know, it's, like people already know who Green Ronin or Cobalt are, and the, the only way you would have explicitly known that Cobalt or Green Ronin did it is if you look for that little title line, because otherwise, like, or you have to go to their websites to really know. Just, no, no, because if you if you go to, to Out of the Abyss and you open to the back cover, there's like two or three pages advertising Green Ronin uh, mm -hmm. in that book. So, like, and, and frankly, like, we, I know from our own subscribers and our own audience, there's tons of people that never even look out side of, you know, fifth edition or Wizard of the Coast products. And like one of, one of the things we like to try and do is sneak in Fate and uh, Star Wars and some of this other stuff and, and let them know that there's other games out there that they can play. And some of it do some of them actually do it better than D and D, depending on what it is. For well, specific look, purposes, yeah. Well I, I would describe it like this. Do you want to own hundred percent of a grape or ten percent of a watermelon? Hmm. You know? Yeah. Hey, I like grapes like anybody else, but that watermelon, that's probably pretty nice. That's probably nice. Change. I'm just guessing. You know, it's like... And there's no, there's no, there's there's nothing stopping you from doing both. I mean, you can right. do you can do a side thing, and then once you've got the coverage, go and create your own thing. Just don't put any of the stuff that, 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 that you're working on that you don't want to share. Just hold on to that. Come up with something else. Put it out there with Watts. Right. And once you got the coverage, you can then go. That that would be my idea. Or, go. well, I mean, as we call it, you know, being Joss Whedon. Because that's all he does. You know, I'm going to do this Avengers movie, and this other Avengers movie, and I'm going to take this pile of money I got, and I got some cool ideas for this money. And it's going to be awesome. We know the stuff he's going to make is going to be awesome. And, you know, whore yourself out to who you need to. Get the money. Then do what you need to do. Uh, well, I mean, or so like the 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 big time actors doing like the big movie, big blockbuster, and then they go and do uh, several indie films or whatever, you know. Yeah. Ryan, look, we've all hoard ourselves at one time. I've hoarded myself for a lot less than what I've made. <laughs> you gotta do what you got to do. I was young. I needed the, need the money. <laughs> Things happen. Uh, nice. So, 
I think it's time to wrap it up. I feel like we're all kind of kind of winding down here. You know, it's it's been fun. And I enjoy. You know, like I said, if you haven't checked out Lowe's Junior Porter, check him out. Check out his YouTube channel. It's I think crazy. that's like the only link I didn't put in the description. But, but I'm like, if they go to your Facebook, they go to your oh. Kickstarter, they go to your website, they're gonna find that as well. I am a media whore. I don't deny it. Media whore. Whore. <laughs> You know, so with that, guys, you should go check out his Kickstarter crisis, crisis of the world eater. Let's let us let us support this thing and get a fifth edition version. And and Hopefully, that, let's that's, 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 I'm hovering. I'm waiting for you to do more five E stuff. Uh, we have something in the works. Circling like <laughs> uh, So, uh, with that, if you guys want to all take yourself out, and then we'll say good night to everybody. Hey, yeah. uh, or Ryan. Okay, sure. Hey, well, I've been Nerd Artist Ryan, and you know where to find us because you're watching it on our YouTube channel. Hey, I'm Nerd Artist Ted. Thanks for watching. And I'm still Lewis Porter Jr., but i got to go make sandwiches for my son, so it's not as exciting as everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with that, guys, I'm Dave from Nerd Archie. Until next time, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.